Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 347 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm very excited to say that the UK tour starts in like a couple of weeks, man. It's going to be sick. I can't wait. I booked all of my accommodation. I'm freaking out about whether or not I've done the visas properly. It looks like, I don't know, you don't need a visa to get into the UK if you're Australian. So you just kind of walk in. I think that I've, you know what I've done? I've confirmed this with like five other Australian comics <laughs> who have done shows over there. And I think that I've realized that I am just traumatized by US immigration, which is my only experience with travel internationally. Actually, that's not true. I've only ever had horrible experiences with immigration internationally. Because in New Zealand, I remember I did my first ever New Zealand tour, right? I didn't know this. And my fault, all right? I didn't know this. I couldn't just... I was doing a tour. I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to bring merchandise in, right? I brought all these... I had a suitcase and it was just absolutely full of t-shirts, right? Now... If you are bringing in merchandise, you have to pay like an import tax. And if you post it right in the mail, there's hardly anything that gets taxed. But if you try, basically try to smuggle in shit to sell. And then even more dumb than that is I was honest when I was going through customs, which is something that you should never do, especially if you're trafficking drugs, which I was not. The only white product in my suitcase were the hundred or so t-shirts that I'd brought on the New Zealand tour. And dude, they taxed me so fucking hard. I had like a hundred t-shirts, I think, and then like a hundred posters, right? And the the customs guy, you know, how old was I? I was early 20s. Like I was a kid and it was my first ever like international tour, which doesn't, it doesn't even really count for New Zealand. That's not an international tour. That's like another fucking state. The flight to New Zealand is like shorter than the flight to Perth from where I am. But anyway, I get to the airport and I go through and I get to customs and they're like, hey, what are all those t-shirts for? And I go, oh, I'm selling them. Now, if that happened now, I'd be like, oh, I have have severe OCD and every 10 minutes I need to change into a new t-shirt. And then they would go, why are they in lots of different sizes? And I go, well, that's why my OCD is classified as severe, you see, my friend, because uh, not only do I have to cycle through t-shirts every 10 minutes, I also have to start with a small and work my way up, my way up to an extra large and then go back to small and I rotate and if I wear the same t-shirt twice, I'll kill myself in the airport. It's a, it's a condition that I have, I'm crazy. That's what I would have said now. And, and I don't know if that would have gotten me deported, but that would have been better than what they taxed me for, you know? I get to immigration, they're like, what are these for? And I go, oh, I'm going to sell them. And they go, did you pay import tax on these? And I was like, import tax? What's that for? And they went, that's what you have to pay if you're bringing products into a country that you don't live in and you're going to sell them. And I went, import tax? Well, I'm not a business. And they went, is this a business trip? And I said, yes. And they went, well, you're a business. And I went, fuck. And the, the guy in customs was like, he, like, and I had I'd sold hardly any tickets It was a tiny little tour. Like, I haven't gone back to New Zealand because I haven't been confident that I'd be able to, like, sell more than what was a very unprofitable venture at the time, right? Everyone's like, oh, come to New Zealand. I'm like, I don't know if I can sell tickets in New Zealand, if I'm being real, all right? We've just learned that I can't sell tickets in fucking Launceston, and I live in this country. Although, who lives in Launceston? Whatever. I've got a beef with Launceston, a blood feud. It's just started now, which admittedly, probably isn't the best way to sell tickets in a city. But that's what we have. Anyway, would you let me tell my story? And we're going to get into the Mr. B stuff, and we're going to get into the Joe Biden stuff, and we're going to get into the Cody Co stuff. But right now, it's about me. And I get to, the, and, I, and he goes, what are these for? And I'm going to sell them. And he went, uh-oh. And then he started going, how much are you selling them for? And Now I know he was trying to psychically tell me to lie. Every now and then when you get in trouble with someone who knows that they're enforcing a fucking bullshit rule, 
Like, you ever, you ever have an interaction with someone and they've got, these are the rules. And even though it's coming out of their mouth, even they know it's fucking bullshit, but they've got a boss. You know, who's breathing down their neck. And both of you, you know, if you're in person, away from security cameras and other witnesses, both of the, the real conversation would be, listen, my fucking psycho boss is making me do these rules. I know they're bullshit. You and me, we know what's going on. We both know they're bullshit. All right. But he's a fucking psycho. And this is what I get paid. So I don't care about this rule. I'm just trying to not get written up. Which is the worst kind of rule. Where it's like, oh, it's written down on a paper, a piece of paper somewhere. So like some fucking peon who doesn't even care about the rules is enforcing it, even though both you and them know that it doesn't make any fucking sense. This argument doesn't really apply to when you're smuggling goods into a country. But whatever. He was trying to psychically tell me, like, if you tell me the most outrageous fucking lie, I'll write it down on a piece of paper and pretend I believe you, and then you can sell your t-shirts in New Zealand. Because he didn't care. It wasn't drugs. It wasn't dangerous. It was just a kid trying to make some money, right? But I was like, oh, I'm selling them for $40. Dumb cunt. And he goes, well... Are you selling all of them for $40? Like, is or is that just the extra largest? He gave me an out. I didn't pick up what he was throwing down. And I go, yep, sell them for $40. And then he goes, all right, well, because they cost that much, that puts the tax category here. So for every single t-shirt, I'm going to have to charge you this much. And then I looked at him and said, I don't think I even have that much in my bank account. And he looked at me and said, well, we can take the t-shirts and dispose of them. And then I, and then I thought, well, then, but if, if that happens, uh, then I can't, then I'm fucked because I'm like, I, that can't happen. I need to sell those to, to make money. I'm not making much money on this tour. The merch is my profit margin. And he went, I believe you. But you just told me the truth and that's your mistake. Always lie. Always lie. Especially at immigrations and customs. Not good advice. And then, and then, yeah, I think he charged me like 100% of the money that I would have made from selling the shirts. Profit, you know, like it was obscene. And I just had to, I just had to pay it. And then he goes away and he goes, all right. Um, like he gives me, he gives me another like 10 minutes by myself to think and to make the correct decision to lie to him. And he goes, all right, well, these posters, he comes back after 10 minutes. So these posters, are you selling these or are these for another purpose? Because if you're selling them, I have to charge you import tax on these and i went "Uh and then he went but if you were you know displaying them around the venue well that would be advertising and i wouldn't charge you import tax so are you selling these or are they advertising and i went they i'm set and he shook his head and he went these look like they're for advertising and i went they're for advertising and he went that's great (laughs) <laughs> that's what I'm going to write down on this piece of paper here that these are for advertising these posters that have no dates on them that just it's just like cool artwork no date no venue just like the name of the tour these are advertising this man is bringing in the world's worst advertisements so thank god for that customs official and now You know, stupid me. Like, when I go over to the UK, I'm not going to be bringing t-shirts and shit. I'll be printing posters in the country. Because I'm not a fool. But, yeah, that's, that's my first experience with international immigration. Or customs, rather. My only other experience is when I went to America and I try, and I, and I tried to get in through New York. And the guy just treated me like a terrorist. And I was, and I couldn't comprehend the size of New York. 
I knew it was a city. I didn't know that it was also a state. I thought it was like Melbourne. The CBD in Melbourne. Which you can walk from one end to the other without really breaking a sweat. Whereas in New York, if you tried to do that, it'd take you three days and you'd probably get murdered halfway. (laughs) Because you'd be in the wrong area at the wrong time. You know? And he's like, he goes, I get there and he goes, all right, where are you staying? And I was like, New York. And he went, where? And I went, the city. And he went, where in the city? I went, New York. He went, where in the city? And then I started to panic and then he got suspicious and then I was freaking out. I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm at an Airbnb. And he goes, where? I'm like, I don't know. In the in the CBD. And he said, what's a CBD? And I went, I don't know. And he goes, you don't know? And I went, I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. Just went from zero to a hundred the fucking immediately. I was like, oh, I'm in the land of the free. And he was like, oh, get on the ground, you fucking terrorist. So this time, when I go into UK, I'm going to be I'm gonna be on my A game. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be like, don't worry, mate. Me bottle of war is empty. God bless the queen, in it. Long live the king. Prince Andrew doesn't sweat. I love Prince Philip. You know, I won't be wearing the leather jacket. Just in case I get recognized. Hey, aren't you the guy that... Go, fuck! (laughs) That's it, man. So I'm excited. I'm like, dude, I'm stoked. I booked booked all my accommodation. I'm going to take trains. I'm going to train it. I've got one big suitcase and that's it. I really, really tried to not take a suitcase, but I got to bring my camera gear and stuff like that. And I don't want to be lugging around like a, like a camera bag backpack that's, that looks like it's got an expensive camera in it because, I don't know, apparently there's a lot of theft going, along, going around in, in, the, in the UK, which a few of my UK friends have warned me about, which is, you know, weird. Um, I'm just excited, man. It's going to be, it's going to be, I can't believe that the first London show sold out. The second one's half full. I think one of the Manchester shows is sold out. We've had another one. It's half full already. It's so cool. You know, I, I got a ticket report and, and I, I think we've sold like 20 tickets already in, uh, Glasgow maybe. And it's, it's only a, like a small little thing. And that's at the end of the tour. I don't know. It's just, it's spinning me out. That I like I've never set foot in that country and it's looking like the shows are gonna be like full. It's so cool. And I'm so grateful and I can't wait to do it. And it happens very soon. Very, very soon. And I'm excited. Another huge update, guys. You're gonna be very proud of me. All right. Huge, awesome news. Okay. You're gonna be so proud of me. You really will. I told you that once I get my my new chin, when I become healthy, when the braces come off, it's fucking over for you. And something very, very cool is happening very, very soon that you're going to see. But something even more cool. <laughs> I can't wait for you to see it. Anyway, even more cool. You know what I did? At my big 30 years of age, I walked in to Vic Rhodes and I renewed my learner's permit let's go i renewed my learner's permit at 30 years of age i walked into that motherfucker and i looked the woman in the face and she goes what are you here for and i went i you know i'm proud of myself (laughs) i went i am here to renew my learner's permit and she said Oh, great. So you're here to get your driver's license, your learner's permit. So you're going to have to do the test. And I said, uh, no, I don't think I need to do the test. And she said, everyone who's getting a license needs to do the test. And I said, no, because I, over 12 years ago, <laughs> over 12 years ago, I did the learner's test when I was 18. Which already is fucking late and pathetic. Like, everyone else in Australia gets it at 16. I got it at 18, and now I'm 30, 
and I had to renew it. And I'm having with an, an argument with the woman about whether or not I need to do the test. And it's one of those arguments where it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then both of you realize that you're having two separate conversations. And it's an unwinnable argument because you're not on the same page. You know those arguments? My favorite color is blue. Well, how does that make any sense when carrot is helps you see in the dark? Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, I was talking about colors. Oh, I was talking about vegetables. Oh, okay. Well, can we... I go, I'm, I'm, here to renew, I'm here to renew my learner's permit. She went, okay, so you need to do the test? I said, no, I do not. I'm here to renew my learner's permit. And she went, renew? <laughs> and I said, yes. Yeah. And she goes, can you do that? And I went, I don't know. That's why I'm here. She went, oh, hang on. Let me find out. And dude, no one in that office, none of them, there were like 10 people there had ever renewed a learner's permit. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because they're valid for 10 years. And not a single person in that 10-man office, all of which are like 50 plus, so like fucking tw two decades at least worth of experience for each individual person, not a single one of them had ever renewed a learner's permit. Because... No one needs that ten, more than 10 years to get their fucking L's other than me. Do you, know, do you know how embarrassing that is? How far, like I showed up with a beard and was like, hi, I would like to renew my learner's permit. And she goes, renew? I said, yeah. And she went, oh. I didn't even know they, they could expire. <laughs> I said, bitch, you work here. And she's like, all right, well, she goes into like a, like a, like the back and she pulls a drawer and, and gets a format and goes, dust, <laughs> dust and cobwebs fly off it. The drawer hasn't been touched since they opened the fucking office. You know, it's not even a printed piece of paper. It was like, it was written on vellum. Using using a, a quill and ink written by a monk back in 1752. And verily, if if uh, someone if some invalid is moronic enough to lapse for so so long in his driving duties to apply for his learners, yet not even uh, decide to try for ten years, we shall renew it. For another decade. You know, it was so old that they had crossed out the part where it says no women are allowed to drive. You know, they crossed out the no. It just says women are allowed to drive. And she she gives it to me. And she goes, just sit over there. And I and I and I sit in the waiting room. They go, No, 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 we've got another chair for you, and it's just a chair that says fuckhead on it. This is the fuckhead chair. We didn't even know we had these, but this is the process. If you come in to renew your learner's permit, you sit in the fuckhead chair. And then uh, normally what would happen is is everyone's number would get called. You know, 52. Someone would go up and they would, you know, pay a fine. It was speeding. 53. Someone else would go up and it'd be like some fucking freshly 18-year-old girl getting her fucking license and her mum's there and they're like congratulations you didn't end up like him <laughs> I'm just in the fuckhead chair 54 some other guy goes up he gets congratulations you're on your P's oh yeah I didn't end up like him 55 someone else gets up you know they're older than 25, but they get their, they, they get their license because you don't even need the minimum hours anymore. Yeah, I didn't end up like him. 56. Someone else gets their full license. And then when it's my turn, they don't call the number. They just go, fuckhead. Hey, dickhead. Oi. Hey, everyone, look at this guy. He's 30 years old and he has to renew his learner's permit. Not only did he have 10 years to renew, to get his fucking license, but it also expired two years ago and he didn't renew it for two years. 
which is even worse than not driving because that requires even less effort. Look at this dickhead. And then everyone got up and started booing and hissing. No, that, that didn't happen. That's what should have happened. If, if people treated me like that, I probably would have got my learners or my license a lot quicker, but instead everyone's like, oh, do you need a lift? It truly is only inconvenient for everybody else in my life. That's not necessarily true. Now it's starting to, to get in the way because, uh, because there's a three at the start of my age. So all of that, yeah, no worries, mate, just come with me has just turned into disdain. They're like, really? Do you need me to pick you up? Hey, aren't you a father? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Don't you ever have a mortgage? Why don't you have your license? That's the only reason I got my mortgage. Because I, cause I was so fucking autistic about comedy and figuring out YouTube and all of this shit that I was like, if I even deviate from staring at fucking analytics and, my, and notepads and performing and touring... For one second to get my license, it'll all crumble. Now that was probably an unhealthy way to run my life. But you can't deny that there's some correlation between a lack of license and creative success. Damn, I'm trying to think of a single example that isn't me. We're just going to have to settle on successful women living in Muslim nations. <laughs> anyway, they call my number and I go up to the... I go up to the guy and it's like, it's like some uh, ill, like few, not very used desk. And he goes, Hey, what are you here for? And I went, I'm here to renew my, my learner's permit. He went, Oh, you need, Oh, that's not me, mate. You need to go and do the test. And I went, no, no, I'm, I, I'm here to renew my learner's permit. And he went, do we do that here? And I went, yeah. And he goes, fuck, I've never done that before. And I said, really? And he went, yeah, man, I've been here 30 years. I've never once done this. You're the first one. Like, I should be proud of myself. Oh, you're the, you're the only guy fucking stupid enough who's that much of a fucking invalid to, to spend 10 years not getting their license and then two years not renewing their learners. Congratulations. And then it's like me and him doing the paperwork for the first time. And he's like, oh, oh you need to do that. Oh, okay. You need to fill out this. And oh, okay. Well, we'll have to do that, won't we? And I do that. And then he goes, that'll be $9. Thanks. And I went, here you go. And he goes, the first one's free, but the second one we charge you. And I went, yeah, I don't think the $9 is the reason why. I, I never got... I don't think the $9 fee was the reason why. I think it was more so just like... Who I am. <laughs> and then he, he gives me the form back and he goes, Alright, you're all done. And then I went... That's it? And he went, yep. And I go... What, what happens now? And he goes, you're going to get the license in the mail. And I went, oh... Are you sure that's it? And he went, yep, that's, that's it, I think. And then I went, don't I have to take, take a photo? And he went, oh, you probably do. That's right. Sorry, I've never done this before. And then I had to go and take a photo. And the, the, it was, the camera was on a tripod that was too short for me. And he goes, oh, sorry, mate. You're going to have to squat down. As if this couldn't get any more fucking embarrassing. I'm... I'm not like I'm literally way too grown for the to take my photo for the learner's permit. And he went, "Sorry, buddy, it needs to be that that low for people in wheelchairs." And I just thought, I think it's actually because 
a lot of the people that are getting photos taken for their learner's permit are 16-year-old girls who are like four foot nine because they're 16. <laughs> just everything about it was just humiliating. And that's what I deserve. Hmm? That's what I deserve. In fact, they should have just... You know what it should have done? It should have been like, you know, when you when you try to become Jewish? You try to convert to Judaism? They, they, they have to... A rabbi has to reject you three times? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if you want to renew your learners, they're like, I don't believe you. Look. Look. In my defense, when I was 16... My mum, every time I got in the car with her to learn how to drive, was a fucking anxious wreck. And it freaked her out, which freaked me out, which made neither of us want to do it. And then I went driving with my dad once, and he chain smoked so much, and I have really bad asthma. And I was like, I can't be in the car when you smoke. And he went, I can't be in the car if I don't smoke. And it was like a stalemate. And that's a great reason why... I didn't get my license uh, from the age of 16 to 18. Now, when I was 18 and I had my own money to pay a driving instructor or to ask some of my older friends to teach me how to drive, that doesn't hold weight anymore. Mummy's too anxious. Dad smokes too much. But for the first two years, that's my excuse. For the other eight, no excuse. For the, well... There was a lockdown, okay. So, so all right. So, out of the twelve years, let's see. See, this is what this is what's really great about um, being human is that you can kind of make anything someone else's fault, or at the very least, not your fault. So, so what we've got here, we've got twelve years from the age of sixteen to thirty of not getting my license. So, sixteen to eighteen, we can whack out two years, not my fault. Mum and dad's fault. So that's great. That's, uh, you know, we've almost got 20% of the responsibility. We put that on mum and dad. Great. Um, now, now we've still got about 10 years. Okay. So what we can do is what's really good about this is uh, we've got COVID. Okay. So let's say from 20, 2020 all the way up to 2022, that's, I, I w- it was illegal to do driver's lessons. I know this because there was a brief period where I was doing driving lessons. Pretty good. And then I had to stop like six times because we had lots of... So we're so so taking two years out. That's four years. So out of 12 years, we've got already four. Not my fault. So we're going to whack that out. That's uh, you know, 30% of the blame placed on other people. Not my fault at all. I can already feel you guys coming on board and supporting me uh, in you know the soon to be rational argument this is that this is not my fault at all so four years not my fault okay now we can take another two years of me being very sick because I was sick all lockdown but then the final two years from from 2022 to, to, to like now all right very sick so we're gonna take another two years so we've got that six years all right <laughs> that's good so half the reason why I haven't got my L's someone else's fault entirely nothing to do with me. This is great. We're, how are we going to get rid of the, the rest of the six years? So we've got about six years. So look, from, from like the age of 18 to, I would say, 22, all right, I was just hustling. And I was... and I. <laughs> And I was, this is a stretch, I was working really, really hard on posting Facebook sketches, like shit never said at a footy game. All right, so out of four, out of those four years, we'll take one and put that where, you know, I, maybe I was touring, so I wouldn't have been able to do it. Maybe I uh, had the comedy uh, festival. Maybe I had the uh, comedy special. All right. So we'll take, so look, I'm happy. I'll do you a deal. If, if you give me that, that one extra year, all, right, all the other ones, they're hundred percent mine. All right. 
Blame it on parents, COVID, I was ill. Great, great excuses. If you give if you give me that one year, I'll accept full responsibility for the for the rest of the years. And that's a deal. However, all right, thank you very much. Pleasure doing business with you. However, because I've just taken seven years away from the 12, all right, that are not my fault. So we've got seven years that are my fault. We've only got six years where it's my fault. I'm happy to say, thanks to my expert negotiation deals, my logic, my facts, my reasoning skills, that it's mostly not my fault. So I actually can't feel bad. And, and, you, know, and you know what else? Shame on you for judging me. Okay? Because, I mean, you were there with me from the very start of this. You heard about everything, all of my, everything I just said. All right? And you still want to say that I'm a loser because I'm 30 years old and I'm on my L's and I just renewed my learner's permit. Shame on you. Who's the real loser here? You for being judgmental. Because you are trying to judge me for something that was that was completely, well, not completely, mostly out of my control. For the seven out of 12 years, completely not my fault. So I think that a lot of people are, are coming to me and they're saying crazy things like I need to reflect on my actions and I need to take my life a little bit more seriously and I need to actually fucking step up and get my license. I think that you need to take a good hard look at yourself and really evaluate how <laughs> judgmental you are. And and what's more, I would like an apology written in the comments. All right? Spotify apparently just released comment sections. So I would like every single comment on YouTube, but now also on Spotify to be an apology for judging me for not having my license because as you and I both know, it's not my fault. Well, it's partially my fault, but partially is not majority. So, you know, shame on you, you judgmental prick. I don't even. I don't even know why. Why I. I don't know if I can even have you be a part of this fan base anymore. If you're going to be so judgmental, if there's one thing about this show, about my career, it's built on love. And it's certainly not built on judging strangers. Okay, so, so why don't you take? Why don't you just take a step back, and really think about you, yourself and who you are? If you would judge a victim like me, all right, that's what it is. That's what I am. I'm a victim. It's not my fault at all. Uh, well, seven of this. It's mostly not. It's it's mostly by just this much not my fault. It's slightly more than fifty percent. Not someone else's fault. It's like it's like sixty something percent someone else's fault, and that forty percent that you're using to, to judge me is just disgusting. And I'm disappointed in you. All right. So you take all of that, all that judgment, all that disrespect, and I want you to wrap it up in a nice little ball and eat it. And that, and you should judge yourself. All right. So if you think I'm a loser for having no license, guess who's living in a glass house? Hmm? Guess who's dri Guess who's legally driving a glass car? You. And if you have any time, jump in the passenger seat. I'll jump in the drivers and we'll fucking go. You know, I text my driving instructor to come over to my house a couple of weeks ago and he said yes. And I said, actually, don't worry about it. My learner's permit has expired. And he said, never had that one before. <laughs> So I'll be sending him a stern text message letting him know that it's mostly not my fault. On a technicality, because that extra year, look, it's at least 50% someone else's fault. At I'll Look, I'll do you a deal. It's only half my fault. No, I don't like how that sounds. It's half someone else's fault. The other half, look. We don't need to address it. Deal? Great. Thanks. Pleasure doing business with you. I expect those apologies written in the comment section before you finish listening to this. 
Now, episode 350 of the podcast is, uh, is, oh, well, will we'll have already happened by the time you listen to this. So, <laughs> so I hope you bought tickets and enjoyed the show. It will, uh, come out when episode 350 is supposed to. We're gonna edit it and bank it. Hopefully it was good. It, you know what? I'm manifesting. It was great. It was amazing. It was the, the best show we've ever done. I am trying something new. With the live ones, every other live one has had guests. Uh, this one, it's going to be just me, which I've never done before. We're gonna like it's really a live, it's a live podcast. It's live. It's just going to be me doing this, but but there'll be an audience, and hopefully, it's good. It might be a disaster. It you know what? It'll it'll probably have its moments. It'll ebb and it'll flow. That's what I'm... I'm hoping it has some high ebbs and some great flows. What's the bad one? Ebb or flow? Whichever one's the bad one, that's probably not going to happen. Did you know that Mr. Beast has been harboring pedophiles? I didn't know that, but that's what Twitter wants me to believe. Chris Tyson... From Mr. Beast has been uh, exposed for their very questionable interactions with minors on Twitter. Can we enjoy any YouTubers anymore? Thank God I call, I get to be a, a comedian, all right? We only have like, I don't know, like the great black marks against our industry is like, I don't know, Louis C.K. and Carlos Mencia. Neither of which come close to the the dark depths of like Minecraft YouTube. Is it possible to enjoy a YouTuber for more than three years anymore? It doesn't seem that way. Every single YouTuber seems to have some kind of scandal that happens, is happening or about to happen. It's not good. I'm very comfortable in my position in where I'm like one foot out of the YouTube world. I'm like an observer that sometimes gets inside goss. That's great. I don't want to be in the middle of it. I like being one foot out and and, and fully in the stand-up realm because fuck, I can't keep up. You know, I just found out that like every single Minecraft YouTuber that blew up in like the last 10 years got allegations and they don't upload anymore like everyone surrounding that dream bloke has just had their careers ethered they don't post anymore something about minecraft and youtube they combine and they put evil thoughts in your brain i was think i was talking about it with an adult who's not a youtuber the other day but also is like around it and sees i think that i think that youtubers like myself, right? When I, I'm thinking about when I started my career, right? <clears throat> YouTubers start as kids. Although I started at 18, actually. I'm pretty different. Well, that's, you kind of get, whatever. Here's my point. YouTubers, they, they are obsessed with YouTube as children. Especially the ones that like blow up now. And in the last, I don't know, five years or so. Right, YouTubers that are obs they're obsessed with YouTube as children, they start making videos as children, teenagers, whatever. Some of them, or the biggest ones, get very early success as children, like going from like 17 to like 20. So in this like children, adolescence, young adulthood, they get success, they skip the need for having a job because even if you're only making like a couple hundred bucks a month off YouTube ads, that's more money for less work than you would get doing minimum wage anything in America, right? So they just don't get part-time jobs. So they don't have that interaction with adults. They're in school. They either finish high school and don't go to uni because YouTube's almost working or they leave high school because YouTube's really working or they quit uni because YouTube starts to work or whatever. And now they're just successful. And their job is like, 
entertaining children for the most part because they're young. Your fans usually trend a couple years younger than you. And then, you know, hopefully, th if things go well for them, they never have a job. They just do YouTube until they retire, which means they're like, I can't think of another job where you just have zero un zero needed interaction with anyone older than you and you have no like no mentors no physical in real life mandatory connections to anyone else because everyone you work with you work with online me and Keelan are very weird. We work in person. Physically. I don't know a single other YouTuber that does that. Everyone else is remote. They've got some fucking editor. He's a 17-year-old autistic kid who works in Sweden. You know, they've never met. He barely speaks English, but he's a gun at Premiere Pro. And and he understands the job, which is to edit out the slurs and but but keep in the funny moments during the gameplay video. So you have like this, this fucking teenager who rockets to success and from that point never intera has to interact with an adult or, or even someone more successful than them. And they're constantly interacting with children. And I think it actually stunts your development as a human. And that's why so many of these YouTubers can interact with children, have all of these weird interactions with kids that in their mind is just jokes and just silly, but to every normal person's view is like, oh, that's fucking, like at best, highly inappropriate, worst grooming. And I think that's this Chris Tyson fucking thing. Because like with me, I have to, like, YouTubers, they don't have to interact with society. So many fucking YouTubers that I've met are just really weird people because they're fucking millionaires. They have, they have no boss. They've never had a boss. They, there's no middleman, which is great, but it means that they don't interact with society in any meaningful way unless they leave the house to buy designer clothes from Gucci. And that's like the extent of the interaction they have with normal humans. Everyone else they talk to is like a YouTuber like that. They have no sleep schedule. They have no reason to do anything. They have no deadlines. They have no nothing beyond, oh, you have to fucking put the Raid Shadow Legends ad in by the end of the month. That's it. And they get $100,000 for that. Literally. And I feel like it, it creates this weird, stunted individual that's really great at entertaining 16 to 23-year-olds, but is really bad at knowing what is appropriate in any scenario, ever. Especially because you take all of that lack of real-world experience and then you give them a million dollars a year and it, you just create like a fucking... A toddler with a gun. It's like, fuck, he's having fun, but I think he might accidentally shoot someone or himself. And I think that I skipped that because I tour, right? Because I I run my business in in real life. So Every time I get on a plane, I have to interact with the system. If I go through immigration and I'm just a fucking idiot, I have to learn from that because there's actual consequences that happen in my face and not like annoying someone on Twitter or via email or some esoteric fake fucking thing that doesn't exist in real life. <clears throat> but also my rewards, like what I get from how hard I work, I experience in the real world. COVID was really hard for me because that that all disappeared and all I had, like I was a YouTuber for two years and I didn't like it. And I was making crazy money, way more money than I am now. 
and way more money than I've ever made because I was just doing YouTube really, really, really well. But I didn't really like it because it was like money would come in and views would come in and comments would come in, but it, it didn't feel real because it wasn't real. And I was thinking about this, looking at all of these YouTubers that have inappropriate interactions with minors from like the, the very malicious to the, oh, I think this guy genuinely doesn't understand that this is not on. Right? Which doesn't mean they shouldn't experience repercussions, but it's just like, oh, that's so interesting that you don't even know that what you've done is really fucked. Which I think is the Chris Tyson situation. It's like, I've... It seems like you don't understand. And even the Dr. Disrespect thing, right? Like even he said in his statement where he apologizes for like trying to hook up with a minor, he says, I'm not like that and I'm not a monster. Those people are monsters. And it's like, brother, you're talking about you. you do you even know what you've done? It's like this weird disconnect of like your own actions versus or your own perception of your actions versus like what actually happened. I gotta turn, I'm hot. I gotta turn my thing off, my heater off. <clears throat> and yeah, I was thinking about like these YouTube and these are like, you know, people that I've met or interacted with online. And there's just something weird about a lot of creators, especially the ones that blow up when they're like, from the age of, or the ones that decide from 15, because they get a little bit of traction, and then they, and then it starts working 18, 19, and then they start killing it in 20s. And they, and they skip that development phase where you, because you're like, it's, you know what it is? It's kind of like when you're a high school kid, and then you go to university, and then you become a teacher versus someone who goes to high school takes a couple gap years, goes to uni, becomes a mechanic, doesn't like it, and then becomes a teacher. Those two types of people are so fucking different. And it's because one person has experienced life outside of the school environment and the other person, it's literally been 100% of their life is this fucking classroom. That's kind of the closest thing I can think of it where, where you grow up in this, this, but YouTube, it's even worse. You grow up in this isolated fucking bubble where you're your own boss. You have no working hours. You make insane money for doing hardly any actual real work. You get celebrated. You become famous. You have all this power and influence. Uh, but most interactions that you have are with these other people who live in their own little bubbles that aren't living in the real world and then children who fucking love you. And I, I think it, it just, it doesn't let these people experience the real world and what actual normal people think, you know? Whereas someone like, yeah, that, for, what I'm saying is there's such a huge difference between the hyper successful YouTubers that I know or have interacted with versus the hyper successful comedians that I know, even the ones that blew up on YouTube. It's like have, and don't be wrong. Comedians are not normal people either because we don't have fucking jobs either. We get to do fun and create joy. That's the job. And we get paid to do that. That's amazing. And that's not the normal experience, but like, we at least get to interact with the average person and we're constantly thinking what would make like an 18 year old kid and like a 55 year old father laugh because they're both going to be at the show. And we're also always performing to people who are not our fans. So we're not constantly in that bubble. And also if we fuck up or experience failure, like bomb, it's in our face and we feel it in real time in the real world. Whereas when you put out a video that doesn't go well, it's like on to the next one. I don't know. I think it just disconnects these people from reality or, or they don't even disconnect. They never connect. You know, how could you expect someone who's a child, even though they're 23 to understand what is and is not appropriate. No one's ever told them. 
Not that that excuses it in any way, but I think it's a really interesting thing about YouTubers. And not every YouTuber is weird. Like I know a lot of people in the space that are completely normal, um, but so many of them are just like, oh fuck, you're weird. And I and I and I thank the universe every day that I'm a comedian. Fuck, I would I don't know. <laughs> I think I think also like yeah, the only way to experience real world validation for these a lot of these YouTube creators is to like I don't know fuck a fan. It seems that seems to be the only thing that makes them feel anything. And that's, that's like quite problematic because there's that huge power dynamic and, and which is compounded heaps by, you know, the average person that really loves YouTube and gives a fuck about it, you know, max out at like 25, you know, like I look at when I, when I watch YouTube and I love some creators, I fucking love everything that they make and I, and I watch everything that they make and they would have no idea. Cause I would, cause I don't comment, I don't DM them, I don't share their shit, cause I'm, cause I'm thirty, you know. That's like a fifteen year old's game. He's going, I love you, <laughs> commenting share, and I, and that's great. If I'm that for you, I love that. But like, you know. So yeah, this this uh, Chris Tyson stuff is. Is I think is that is just like oh you're not you you have n not become a real fucking person because you got swept up in all this stuff, and I think it's compounded even more by the fact that it's not even really Chris's success. You know, it's their mate Jimmy, and Chris was just there and was friends with him, so they got to come with, and then Jimmy has all of this success and likes having you. You know, you want to have your day ones around and. You know, you probably don't have a weirdo radar when you're fucking blowing up from 17 to however old he is now. You know, your your weirdo radar is generally for new people. It's not for people that have been in your circle the whole time. And yeah, it's definitely a, a, a weird thing. But, but uh, yeah, Chris has come out and said, has apologized for the interactions and is, is leaving Mr. Beast and... Mr. Beast came out and he made a statement and geez, for Mr. Beast to put out a statement on fucking anything that isn't buy my chocolate, that's, that is big. He must've got a few calls from Amazon Prime. You know what I mean? Because no one cares about YouTube drama until Forbes writes an article about it and then it's fucking real. All right. No one gave a fuck that I hadn't been paid for uh, months and months and months of work from my old YouTube network until Forbes interviewed me about it. Then, guess what? I got paid within a, within two months. Finally got all my fucking money. Left the network. Hands clean. But yeah, Forbes has written articles. So Mr. Beast is probably getting calls from every single one of his sponsorships and brands and company founders and everyone that he works with. And he came out. What did he say? Let me have a look at his statement here. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a PR fucking nightmare, right? Because as soon, because Chris is trans, as soon as they transitioned, right? Everyone who's a bigot is like, oh, you need to get rid of the, the trans person. I don't want to look at it. It's yucky. And then Mr. Beast is obviously not going to do that. All right. So the, which, which means that, you know, the only reason, the only way Chris could have gone out is like this. Because even if it was an amicable parting of ways and there was no controversy at all, all these right-wing like people that hate to see trans people in anything would have just made up a conspiracy that Chris was fired for being trans and then they would have celebrated. So Mr. Beast is just locked in a court. Like, you know, even before the scandal, I reckon Chris could have been just sitting in the corner on their ass eating popcorn, doing fuck all, knowing that they couldn't get fired. Because if they got fired, everyone will be like, oh, it's because they're, you know, the transphobes would celebrate 
And then, and then the, 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 everyone else would call Mr. Beast a bigot. Oh, you're, you're a coward. You fired them for being trans. You're a legend. You fired them for being trans. And Mr. Beast will be like, it's because they weren't very good at their job. So, you know, on one hand, it's a fucking nightmare that, that Chris got allegations. On the other hand, Mr. Beast will be like, finally, I've been looking for a reason to do that for ages. All right, Mr. Beast. Over the past few days, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online, and I'm disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I've been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and have taken immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further actions based on their findings. Yeah, that's wild. That's a that's a big thing. See, whenever... This is the same thing with the Dr. Disrespect stuff. Whenever, like, someone who could get sued in a big way, if they were wrong, s- releases a statement that's as definitive as that, it almost always means there's more that we haven't found out about yet. It, at the very least, it means that what we know about is true enough, but it usually also means that something else is coming. And, yeah, with all of this noise and attention on Jimmy Beast and Chris, any skeletons that are, go- that are living in Mr. Beast's closet are going are gonna to be dug up and searched for and looked up and scrutinized. And I'm already seeing clips from, like, you know, years and years and years ago of Mr. Beast back when the entire internet was, was edgy and cringe, saying edgy and cringe shit like the entire website wasn't doing it. Look at this. And it's like, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can give the dude a pass on being a fucking cringe little edge Lord. All right. When he was trying to blow up his channel and get attention by any means. I think, I think, I think he's maybe cured enough blind people to have a little bit of leniency when it comes to some words that were said like fucking eight years ago, you know, I think I think maybe he's 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 given enough houses away, huh? <laughs> Don't you think that he's fed enough starving homeless people to maybe get some leniency when it comes to an edgy, unfunny joke that was made when he was sleep deprived, doing a twenty-four hour fucking stream where he spun a fidget spinner. In my view, doing a stream where you say Logan Paul for 24 hours is way worse than any slur you could say. And I'll even throw in blackface. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fuck Chris Tyson. That's yucky. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's, I think it's, yeah, it's just that... It's that 4chan to Discord to YouTube success to being into lowly and furry stuff as a joke, to being into it for real, to having inappropriate uh, interactions with minors in the Discord server pipeline. That seems to hit a good fucking 30% at least of YouTubers. And I think, again, it's like, it's you know what it is? It's fucking Peter Pan syndrome. It's these people that never grow up and they never interact with adults or people older than them. Oh, and younger than them in real life and and see like how the world reacts to their actions in the real world and those social dynamics it's like it's like when you're a youtuber when you're making 20 grand a month 30 grand a month 100 grand a month a lot of these people and you like you can just be a little freak because no one's going to take your job away because no one even pays you the money. Like you don't, you don't go, thank you boss. You know, there's no dress code. There's none of that. 
There's no society. Like these people live in silos and they just grow up as a freak little fucking 15 year old and then they get something and it goes viral and then they're, you know, they're just like that and they have absolutely zero incentive to be fucking normal at all. And then the world finds out <laughs> that that level of lack of social accountability metastasizes like a cancerous tumor and turns them into a little freak that is talking to minors like that and then go, oh, what? That's that's bad? No, they were just edgy jokes. They were 13, you were 20, brother. Weird. Weird! All right, I think we'll end it there. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, that, that's that's my thoughts on why YouTubers are freaks. Uh, we, didn't cut, we didn't touch on the Cody Co stuff, but that's weird too. All right? Uh, thank you very much for listening. Episode 350 of the Spearhead Sunnies will be live on stage. Uh, I think we'll post that. I, I, it might have been a disaster and it went terribly and, we'll, and we're, never, we're never posting it. Find out how it actually went next episode. Like, subscribe. Grab your tickets to my shows in the UK, Scotland, England, Ireland. Uh, I want to see you there. Ireland's not part of the UK. I've said that so many times. Stop fucking telling me that it's not. I've said that from the start. All right, look at the first fucking promo too. I said UK and Ireland. All right, I know. I'm not a fucking, like, I wish I wasn't part of the Commonwealth. That's not true. Gives me a very powerful passport. I love the Commonwealth. I love the Queen. I love Prince Philip. I love the King. I've always said this. I'm a monarchist. I can't wait to get to the United Kingdom. You know what? I take it back. England, Ireland should be. No, I would like to sell tickets in Ireland. I love Dublin. I love Belfast. And I love red hair all right thank you and we're going to continue on patreon i hope you have a shit one bye